Hello, AP Pre-Calc kids. This is Mr. Bean. Welcome back to another lesson in AP Pre-Calculus. Today, we're going to talk about something called parametric functions. And I love these things. They are so cool. Today's lesson is just a really basic introduction to it. Okay, so don't worry. This will be pretty simple because we're just going to introduce it. And then the next few lessons, we'll get into some more details of uh, some cooler stuff that this, the, these things do. So first off, let's remember that most of uh, for most of algebra and through high school, you've been dealing with these things that we often call rectangular equations. And that's just where you have one variable that's a dependent variable, often we call it a y, a y variable, and then an independent variable, which often we will refer to as x. Okay, so these are just some quick examples of rectangular equations you're used to. One independent, one, one dependent variable. Today, we're going to look at uh, these things that are called parametric functions that have two dependent variables. So instead of just a y as being a dependent, we'll have an x and a y that is dependent. Often it's x and y. And then the one independent variable we'll call a t. All right, so that's the big thing that we're doing today. And this is how it looks. Parametric function. So we have this form f of t. So the function will be f of t equals. And then you have uh, an equation for the x coordinate point or the x portion of the coordinate point and then a separate equation for the y portion of the coordinate point. So that's what you think of a parametric function as. It, it has its own equations, separate equations for the x component and the y component. Now the t, that one is the independent variable and we often refer to it as, not often, we just refer to it as the parameter. t is the parameter. That's the thing that helps us know where the graph is and it is the independent variable, the thing that gets plugged in. So let me show you what we're going to do here. At time t equals negative 1, usually we refer to t, uh, the t, the parameter. It's often considered time. Not always, but often it is. And uh, we're going to say, where is this parametric function? So we have this function here. There's the x-coordinate, right? The x-equation right here, 6 minus t squared. And then t plus 3 is the y portion, the y-equation. That helps us know. So all we got to do is plug it in. So x of negative 1 is going to equal 6 minus negative 1 quantity squared. That gives us 6 minus 1, which then gives us 5. So the x-coordinate point, when you plug in a, the parameter of negative 1, is going to equal 5. And then the y, if we do the same exact thing, the y of negative 1 gets plugged in. So then it's just a simple negative 1 plus 3. And then that leads us to y of negative 1 equals 2. So the function, the parametric function, when you plug the parameter value in of a negative 1, it is going to be at the coordinate point 5 comma 2, because that matches up here. So when we know that time t equals negative 1, what this param parametric function does is it tells us where the graph is at that exact moment. At t equals negative 1, the graph's at 5 comma 2 on a, uh, on a coordinate plane. Okay, so now with that, now let's do where we're filling in a table. So we have a whole table. It's just doing exactly the same thing. Okay, so we're going to fill in this table, and then we're going to use the same graph, same uh, function here to graph it, just so you can get a feel for how the graphs work. So we're creating a numerical table. Let's do this first one. Uh, negative 2, plug it into the, uh, this is the line of parameters, right? The t values. So negative 2 is our first value. And we're going to plug it into the x. So 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And then the negative 2 we plug into the y value. t squared minus 1. That gives us 4, right? Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. All right, and then we'll continue to do these. Let me just do this one more with you, and then you do the rest on your own. Negative 3 halves. That's uh, 3 times negative 3 halves. That's pretty simple. Negative 9 halves. And that's, or you could write it down as negative 4.5 if you wanted. And then uh, what's this one? Y t squared minus 1. So remember when you're squaring fractions, negative 3 squared minus 1, that's just really easy to say 9 fourths minus 1. Or in other words, minus 4 fourths. So that is 5 fourths. And do you have to be that good at fractions? Yes, you do. You never know the type of problem you might see on an AP exam. And they, a college board does this. They'll do it in calculus where you just have a little bit of a kind of a fraction work. And yes, you've got to be good at that. All right. So uh, go ahead and fill in the rest of this chart. Pause the video right now. Fill that in. See how you do. And we'll check your answers here after I resume. All right, there's my answers. You can check yours with mine, see if you got the same thing. Uh, and I'm pretty sure I did not make a mistake. I double-checked that one. All right, so now what we're going to do is graph this stuff. 
So how do we graph these coordinate points? Well, we're going to start with the lowest. Okay, that's the important thing. We have to do this in order. We start with the lowest value of t to the highest value of t. So the lowest value of t is right here of a t equals negative 2. So where is that coordinate point? Negative 6, 3 is the first coordinate point. So that's the first one, negative 6, 3. All right, so I got to apologize. Negative 6 is off the graph here. I'm sorry, I didn't realize that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Just pretend like it's on the graph here. 1, 2, 3, it's up about here. All right, so that's the first one. Next one, negative 9 halves and 5 fourths. So what is that? That's negative 4.5 comma, and then that's about 1.25 if we were thinking decimals, just to help us a little bit. So negative 4.5 right about there, and then 1.25, something like this. Okay, so what you're gonna do is go ahead, pause the video again. You're going to take all these coordinate points and put them in order along this. And then, uh, that, so that's just part A. We'll start, and then you can connect them if you want, connect the points in order. Uh, we'll, let's see what you get. And hopefully your graph looks something like this. And then if we connect them, uh, you're going to see this parabola shape forming. Let me pause so you don't see me mess up when I connect the dots. Yeah, it's a good thing I paused. That was awful. All right, so now we have this connected graph. Now, what we're doing here is uh, I'm going to introduce something that comes up in the next lesson in 4.2, and that is direction. This graph has direction to it. It's not just a, just this graph that's just laying there on the coordinate plane. It has a direction, and I'm going to put tiny little arrows that show that this is where we started. This was the starting point, and we're moving to the right at each of these coordinate points. So that's what this these little symbols are meaning. I'm just referring to that I was moving from left to right at each of these coordinate points. Okay, that again is a 4.2 topic. It comes up in the next lesson. I just wanted to introduce it to you here because it, it just makes sense to talk about this as you're putting them in order. Uh, all right, and then the last thing uh, before we go to the, the, next, the next problem is that uh, there was no restriction. We had this original function, f of t equals 3t, comma, t squared minus 1, but we didn't have a restriction on the parameter, the t. So that means that the, the t parameter, the time, could go forever to the negative infinity and forever positive. And that means that this graph, we would put arrows on it when there's no restriction on the domain. So we'd have little arrows that go off forever and ever and ever. Okay, that's not the case with the next problem. On the next one, and which is our final problem, we're going to have restricted domain. And that just means we're going to have a starting point and an ending point. So here's our function, t squared minus 4, 3t over 2 for the y. And we're going to say it's only for negative 2 to 3. So this here is the start. That's the starting t value. That 3 is where we're going to end. That's the ending t value. That's our ending parameter. So I, it's pretty usually probably easier to just do some nice whole numbers here. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. I did this for you, so you don't have to do all the calculations. Okay, plug that in, got the decimal um, values for this. Now let's just graph it, see what we get. So 0, negative 3 is the first one. And negative 3, 1.5, 1 negative 1, 2, 3, negative 1 1.5. So you go ahead, pause this video, fill in the rest of this graph, and let's see what you get. And hopefully this is what you got. At least yours might look a little prettier than mine. And uh, and what if I did some direction arrows, right? I, where did I start? I started down here, and I went this direction. And then I went this direction. And then here, well, this is kind of weird. I'm going up, so let's just do this. And then I'm going this direction, this direction, and then I kind of stop, but I'll, I'll put the, the little arrow that direction because that's the way I was headed. Okay, so now this is a restricted domain. We had a start point and an end point, and this is the entire graph. So the beginning point of the graph is at what point? At zero, negative three. This is the beginning right here. And then the end of the graph, where did we end up? When the t value was a three, so at time three, we were at the coordinate point five of 4.5, and there we go. Okay, that is your entire lesson for today. That's the introduction of parametric functions. And uh, next lesson, again, we're going to do more with the motion and we'll practice with the calculator. But for now, rock that mastery check and I will see you back in the next lesson.